Hey guys, it's Mitch from Grandad Guna TV. Um, look, I'm just going to keep you guys up to date with the, the latest Arsenal transfer news on the Grandad Guna channel. So, we talk about the latest transfer news. Now, when the window, the window has just shut, and um, the one player that we did not get rid of was Pepe. And um, he's been a thorn in our side for many, many years. A lot of people will, will um, go on record as saying that, you know, there's no way that he was worth 72 million. Anyway, that's here, that's here nor there, it does not matter. The thing is, Besiktas has come in, so they are a um, team in Turkey. And Besiktas has come in, and um, according to Edu Gaspar, according to Edu, Besiktas has come in with a symbolic fee. I don't know about you, man, but what does that mean? What's a symbolic fee? I mean, <laughs> what is that? Symbolic fee. Symbolic fee to me is 40, 50 mil. Trying to get our money back. I mean, symbolic fee. What the hell is that? Um, now, just before I came on to do this stream, so it's just before um, 8 o'clock um, Australian Eastern Standard, Eastern Standard Time, um, Al Shabab have come in. Now, Al Shabab are a Saudi Arabian team. Now, they're not one of the stupidly rich clubs. Sadly, they're not. But they still have come in. Now, I don't know what's going on there. Um, according to lots of different sports journalists, um, Pepe had a medical in Paris um, for Besiktas. Where, um, so he had a medical in France for a Turkish team. So I don't know. We're just going to keep an eye on this one and, and see what actually happens, whether he goes to Al-Shabaab in Saudi Arabia or if he goes to Besiktas in the Turkish Super League. So we'll keep an eye on that one for you. Now, the one I want to talk about, and I want to get your feedback, I think it's really important. One thing about the Arsenal, and it's, I don't know, it's followed us for years and years for so many players, and that is players that don't have any injuries join Arsenal and are immediately injured. And that sucks. But it has been the case. The one player that I'm talking about here is Thomas Partey, the Ghanaian captain. Now, for those of you who don't know who Thomas Partey is, Thomas Partey is the Ghanaian captain, so he plays for Ghana. He is a central midfielder, defensive midfielder, but he started his career at right back. He is 30 years old. And last year, uh, if you were to um, have a yardstick on who were the best um, defensive midfielders last year, there would be an argument and he would have a great shout in the top five of those key areas on the pitch, being defensive midfield. You would argue that he would be in the top five. Now, he's not getting any younger. We get that. And players, they tend to drop off once they crack 30, um, depending on the position they play and how they can kind of reinvigorate their career as far as either slowing down, going to a league that's a bit slower for them, or staying in the best league in the world. And let's be real, the Premier League is the best league in the world. There can be arguments about the Spanish league, etc., etc. But the top 1% players come to the Premier League. And again, that's, that's for another argument. If you disagree with me, then please DM me. Um, and yeah, let's have a conversation about that live so you can get your point across. I'd love to hear your opinion. Now, I did some some scouting and I did some um, some checking out and um, from various different um, sources. And Thomas Partey, since 2021 until current date, now, the injury that he supposedly has, and again, you don't know, we're just, we're guesstimating. We really are. It's not even a word, but we are. We're guesstimating. Um, it's all hearsay. 
because we're not there. We are not the Arsenal doctors, and so it's hearsay. But it's fun to play the game. And the thing is, according to the latest sources, we're looking at a possible groin issue for Thomas Partey. That'll keep him out for around six weeks, which is 42 days. Now, I have looked at his career since joining the Arsenal. And in 2021, he had a muscle strain that kept him out of the game for 24 days. In that time, he missed six games. Also in 2021, he had a hip, a hip injury. And that hip injury kept him out for 39 days, which was another 11 games that he's missed. He had a hamstring injury, which lasted for 18 days, which was another four games he missed. In 21-22, he had an ankle injury. And that ankle injury lasted for 32 days. And he missed four games. 21-22, same year, he had a knock. What's a knock? He had a knock. What is a knock? A, what is it? A cork thigh? I mean, we play rugby league in Australia. And if you turn around and said to a professional rugby league player, oh, I've got a knock, mate. I'm going to have 42 days off. You'd be laughed at. What's a knock? Anyway, he had a knock for 112 days. 112 days. And in that time, he missed 14 more games for the Arsenal. 22-23, thigh injury for 21 days. Missing another four games for the Arsenal. 22-23, there's that word again. There's another knock. Thomas Partey had another knock. And in that knock, he was out for eight days or two games. And this particular injury is apparently a groin issue that's going to keep him out for a minimum of six weeks. So that's 42 days. And that's apparently going to keep him out, uh, based on our current schedule, for another 10 to 13 games. So let's put these numbers into perspective, Arsenal fans. 296 days injured or not available to play 55 games for the Arsenal since 2021 to current date. Now, I'm going to pose this question to you, Arsenal fans. Is it time to say goodbye to Thomas Partey? Is it really necessary to carry a player that is just massively injured all the time? And if it is time to say goodbye to Thomas Partey, who would you like to see come in? Who would you like Arsenal to sign? Now, obviously, you can go to the fairyland and say you want to sign, I don't know, as an example. Well, with Gravenberch, Liverpool's got Gravenberch. Let's say Camavinga. Great, great player. But he costs way, way, way too much. He plays a different position. Um, so, yeah, that's the, the theory. So pick two or three options that you think that that could potentially come in and, and fill that void at the Arsenal. So I want to get your opinions on that. I want to get your real, honest, emotional opinions on if we should hold on to Thomas Partey, who has now sacrificed 55 games and 296 on the sideline since 2020 to 2024. Like, let's be real. Let's be real. 296 days injured. So I think that's something that we really need to take into consideration. Do we carry a player who is so badly injured all the time and I mean, if, oh, you might, there, there might be people out there that say, that's a normal footballer. You know, 296 days is nothing in that time frame. If that's the case, I want to hear from you. DM me so we can have a conversation, a respectful conversation or debate regarding Thomas Party and his, I call him injury prone list. So, yeah, I'd love your opinions. 
Now let's talk about our players who have the honour of representing their national squad over the international break. So who got selected for the nations? So we talk about England. Let's go with the obvious. Okay, so we've got Eddie, which is fantastic. I am super, super happy for Eddie Nakia. Um, he... He's been a destroyer for England in the underage um, grades. In fact, he's a record breaker in the under 21s. But he's now got his fully fledged sign um, with the, the national squad. So big up, Eddie. Well done, mate. Um, you well and truly deserve your opportunity. Go bang some goals for England. You've got obviously Starboy, Bakaya Saka. No surprise there. Declan Rice, no surprise there. I think Declan Rice is a future English captain. And, of course, you've got our keeper, Aaron Ramsdale. Fantastic. Everyone deserves their spot. I really believe that. But I personally think that Ben White missing out is a joke. I really do. Now, I think it hurts Ben White playing the Thomas Partey experiment formation that Mikel's been playing because it doesn't give Ben White the opportunity to play regular football. But he is good enough to play for England, by far. The fact that the English coach or manager, whatever you want to call him, has picked Harry Maguire is a absolute joke. And again, England fans, I'd love to hear your feedback. If you disagree with me, hey, you're entitled to your opinion. I'd love to hear it. But I, I think that's an absolute joke. So Ben White misses out. I cannot believe that, but he misses out. Now, England are going to play Ukraine, Scotland and Australia in the international break. Now, we're talking about Brazil. Now, Brazil, um, obviously, we have all the Gabbies. And for those of you who are new to Arsenal, um, we've got the three Gabbies. They're all Brazilian and they're all Arsenal players. So we have Gabi Jesus, who is a striker. We have Gabi Martinelli. And he is a exciting winger. And then we also have uh, Gabby Magalash. Gabrielle. They're all called Gabrielle, but I call them Gabbies. Um, Gabrielle Magalash. And he is a just an awesome central defender who is what I cl classically call the sweeper. And all three of them have been called up for their national team, Brazil. So big up to the Gabbies. In saying that, just breaking news... Gabriel Jesus has been called up to replace Anthony in the Brazilian squad. So Anthony from Manchester United has been a naughty boy. So Gabi Jesus has got his spot and he's well and truly deserves it. Obviously coming off his injury, I reckon he'll go great guns. I wouldn't be surprised if he bags a couple of goals on international duty as well. So big up the Brazilian Gabbies. That's fantastic. Now Brazil, they're going to play Bolivia. They're going to play Peru, and they're going to play Venezuela. Um, so that's the 9th of September, 10.45 a.m. for um, Australian fans. 13th September, 12 o'clock lunchtime, and 13th of October, 10.30 in the morning. So crack a beer. Well, where I live, I live in Cairns. It's tropical. It's absolutely gorgeous. So, yeah, crack a beer and watch some good football. So, yeah, great times um, to, um, to uh, watch the three Gabbies for, for the Arsenal. Um, Norway, um, so obviously our captain, fantastic, Martin Odegaard. They play Jordan. They play the Faroe Islands. Uh, Deutschland, Germany, that's right. Kai Havertz, no matter what you guys say about Kai Havertz, he still gets picked for his national team. So he, I mean, okay, Germany's not travelling that well. I get that. I get that. But Germany traditionally is an extremely talented football team. And if Kai Havertz is still getting selected, he can't be that bad a player, right? I'd like your opinions on that. So Kai Havertz is playing Japan, they're playing France, they're playing USA, Mexico, and they're playing Austria. Hell of a schedule. Um, Saliba, obviously, William Saliba has been called up for France. Big up, William Saliba. You are a beast, and you're only getting bigger and better. So well done to uh, William Saliba. And they're playing Republic Ireland, Germany, and Scotland. Um, our Polish defender, Jakob Kivior. Jakob Kivior is playing the Faroe Islands and they're playing Latvia. Um, Trossard, our Belgium winger, um, they're playing Azerbaijan and Serbia. 
Ukraine, good old Zinchenko. Now, Zinchenko, they're going to be playing against England. Japan, Tommy is playing Germany, Turkey, Canada, and Tunisia. So that's a heck of a schedule too. Spain, David Raya, you're playing Georgia. So yeah, good on you. Estonia, Carl Hein, young keeper. They're pl he's playing um, Sweden, he's playing Thailand. So some really great games of football to whet your appetite. If you are an international football supporter, you're going to have a great time. A lot of Arsenal supporters tend to not like the international kind of break, and I'd have to agree. I don't like the international break because I love watching my Arsenal. Um, but I suppose we still get some football to watch. Um, obviously, I'm an Australian. <laughs> But um, I will be supporting England, and I have been supporting England for a few years now because Arsenal players are starting to filter back into the English squad. And when you've got Eddie, you've got Saka, you have got Rice, Ramsdale, and very soon, I hope, Ben White, um, it's, it's fantastic to see Arsenal players coming through to the national squad, and I actually love watching them at international level. I'm not too fussed about a lot of the other teams, but I, do, I watch Brazil as well. So on that note, I'd love to get your feedback um, regarding Thomas Partey. What do we do, guys? What do we do out there, Arsenal fans? Do we, do we cut our losses? Do we cut our losses? Or do we stick with an ageing defensive midfielder who's prone to multiple different types of injuries. I want to get your feedback on that, guys. Do we stick with Thomas Partey or do we swipe right? See you later, Jack. You're off. What are your thoughts on that, Arsenal fans? So smash the like button, share the content, drop some comments, and if you like a little bit of what you see, just go ahead and push that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything, and it helps grow the channel. It helps with the YouTube algorithm, which I knew nothing about four or five days ago when I started this channel. <laughs> so on that note, I am just uh, flying by the seat of my pants. I am just on a journey, and I'm very happy to have you all aboard for that journey. Um, in two days of doing some videos and just talking about Arsenal, talking about players, uh, we've already gone to 15 subscribers. Um, great stuff, guys. It's a fantastic start. You know, um, in the coming days and weeks, there'll be all kinds of cool stuff um, that will be available for you guys as well. We're going to have some um, some great products that are going to be giveaways, Arsenal related, of course. And all you have to do is share some content, listen to a video from start to finish. And like and comment on that video. I'm going to have a word in that video. You share that word in your comments and you get free merchandise. How easy is that? So this is about giving you guys the best Arsenal content that I can produce. Now, I'm obviously starting not knowing what I'm doing. And on this journey, I'll learn how to, how to, how to, how to put things together. But... Um, it's all about, what I found out, it's all about viewing hours and subscribers. 1,000 subscribers and viewing hours, and then that gives you gets you to the next level on YouTube. And the sooner I get there, the more I can contribute. The more I can contribute, the more I can give you guys great Arsenal content. And there's going to be lots of opportunities. I'm going to be holding competitions where I'm not going to talk about giving something away. I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to give things away on my channel. And the reason for that is because I want you guys coming back and listening to the content. I want you guys coming back and engaging on the live shows. That's what Grandad Guna TV is all about. It is an Arsenal fan channel. It is a channel that's going to take you on a journey. I'm going to share a lot of stuff with you regarding the history. I'm going to share a lot of regarding our ladies football team. Our under-18s, our under-21s, different parts of the club. I'm going to get you involved in those types of conversations. And hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, um, based on feedback I've been given, we might have some fantastic um, guests that come on to the show as well. 
And um, yeah, and it's all exciting. It's all new. It's all fresh. It's all exciting. So yeah, smash the like button, share the content, drop your comments. And until I see you guys for the next video, my name's Mitch. This is Granddad Guna TV, and I'm out.